Welcome back, Fly Tires, to another Avid Max Time Tuesday. My name is Brady Lair, and today we're going to bring you a good old traditional elk hair. Summer is coming, and this is a fly that you need to have. Going to do it on somewhat of a unique hook today. This is a Tiamco hook. It's the 2302. It's a good terrestrial style hook with a little bit of an elongated shank. Um, forged bronze, bronze hook, nice and strong, but gives that curvature profile. So I'm going to start my thread. I'm using a Vivis 14 knot. This is a rusty brown color that I had. It will match the super fine brown dubbing that we're going to do as the body on this one. And I'm going to start a couple, a few hook eyes back. This will kind of be my measuring point as to where I'm going to bring my dubbing up once we get there. So we'll get our thread started and then go ahead and add our wire, our securing wire. This will be for the hackle, but just nice and quick and dirty. Get it thrown on there, work on back to where that barb is about, and then we can dub out our body nice and quick-like. Super fine brown today, a little bit of a darker elk hair option here. Great pattern and a lot of different color options. I'm sure everybody is aware and has fished the good old elk hair caddis. Dub a nice body out here. With a little bit of a taper to it as we go forward. Keeping a tight noodle on it. Superfine's great because it's gonna be less likely to get waterlogged. When compared to other patterns, it's so nice and tight and dense that it stays buoyant a little bit longer than if you're using a synthetic option otherwise. And we'll just go in stages and work our way on up. Like so. Definitely a summertime bug, or at least late spring and then into early fall when you got the elk hair caddises hatching on those warmer days. Catch that Mother's Day hatch down on the Arkansas River. This is a good one to have handy when they're full blown. But really fishable everywhere. Fishable in rivers, tailwaters, freestones. Great lake fly as well. Imitates not only the caddis flies, but smaller terrestrials and dries also. So once we're right on up, I'm gonna go a little bit further actually. If you haven't tied a lot of dry flies, this is a good one to kind of get you going because there's a few aspects to it that you'll reuse time and time again on lots of other patterns as you keep going down the path. And it'll bring you a fish so you can have that in your pocket, a fly that you tied that will bring utmost success. There we go, so one or two hook eyes back to where we're gonna finish that elk hair wing and then we got our hackle feather here so we're going to measure it out to gauge it on our hackle gauge handy hackle gauge from fire hole here a great little tool for the bench you can also use the hook there is a little oversized but i kind of like them that way and then we'll trip off some of those barbels to give ourselves a nice clean tie-in point here and also a nice first wrap. So just make sure that that's secured. We'll half hitch it. Keep our thread from moving on us as we palmer this hackle rearward. So we'll do one wrap to get it going and then we can open palmer back. It's up to you. The spacing that you want on this you can make a real full fly, keeping them close together, a little bit sparser if you spread them out. Something to play with and kind of 
kind of experiment on. We'll go right on back to where our wire is waiting for us. And then we can kind of wrap that to capture that hackle while trying to avoid trapping too many barbels. So once you have it captured, you can kind of hold your wire at an angle and work forward. And if you kind of wiggle it as you go, it'll help prevent trapping too many. It is somewhat inevitable. inevitable. And then when we're up front, go ahead and capture that. Nice and secured in place. We can spin out the excess here. And then clip out that extra hackle, which can be used on another fly. And then I like to come through with a bodkin. And you can kind of pick out anything that you might have trapped underneath that wire. You get the most out of your hackle. Be careful on the back end though that you don't pick out the part that's trapped by your wire that you need to hold it, holding it secure. Get some of these clumps that should be out of there. There we go. So now we're gonna come in with our elk hair. So I have my nice Primo strip from Wapsie bleached elk hair. Great little material. We're gonna grab a hank. So we're just gonna pull a little bit right off of the hide there to the size that we want. This one is probably for the size 14 that I'm doing, really maybe a half a pencil in diameter and hair. But we'll pull it off the hide and then you can clip it nice and close there and have some elk hair to work with. Pull out all that under fur. like so, and then we'll throw it in our stacker. So you got our tips nice and aligned. Pull our stacker out and you can see mostly aligned, get that broken one out of there. We'll just grab it by those tips. Try not to transfer it around too much so that they stay aligned. Bundling it up. So then we're going to take that bundle, measure out the length, and I'd go just past where the body ends, where your dubbing ends. We'll transfer that into our other hand here. Measure out where we're going to tie it in. And then I always like to come in and clip out where that's going to be. This can take a little practice doing them over and over again to, to kind of gauge how much you want up front. Um, but you can come in if you know, you're know you not quite sure, you can come in and do a couple of quick loose wraps on it to keep it in place and then look back to see how far your wing is going. So with those loose wraps, if you're happy with it, give it a nice downward snug to get that air care to flare out for us a little bit, just like so. Make sure that I keep it back behind the eye as well. And then to help keep it from spinning, you can kind of sneak through with a couple of wraps through that bundle, that head bundle that you just created and pull it nice and snug. Then all you gotta do is give this a whip finish. Maybe pull out some of those fibers that you don't care for so much. Pre-cure it with some floating if you want. That Shimazaki dry shake spray is great for that. I keep some of it on my bench because I can hit my flies when I'm doing them in bulk and then when they hit the river, they don't need to be cured quite as often. Seeps in a bit. 
trim up our head to make it a little bit nicer here. Not the prettiest head on this one, but definitely an effective pattern. The good old Elkhair Caddis. Climb up and get you some fish on some dry flies.